order the January 13 meeting of the Oshkosh Common Council. And I want to welcome those of you that are here tonight. We've got lots of people here tonight. We often don't have this many people, so this is great. I know we got some uh, people that are interested in some things uh, in particular on the agenda tonight. I think we got one or two classes from the university that are here tonight. We've got a couple of folks here who are going to run for council or run for mayor who are also here tonight, in addition to the usual people. So welcome. Welcome here tonight. Also, I want to welcome those who might be watching us on Channel 10, uh, or those who might be watching on the computer, or those who might be listening to us on the computer, or those who might be listening <coughs> to us on the radio. This is your city government, and we do hope you'll participate in whatever way works for you. So again, I welcome you. Thanks for being here. Good to see a great crowd. Okay, I'm going to ask the clerk to take the roll call of the council members. Pansky? Here. Fitzgerald? Here. Cummings? Here. Peck? Herman? Here. Allison Osby? Here. Teller? Here. Present six. Okay, I'm going to ask everybody in the room to please rise. Uh, we will have the invocation led by Council Member Pansky, and then we're going to have the students help us with the pledge. As we gather tonight, we are grateful for the good things that have come to this city. May our decisions always be ones that are for the well-being of all whom we govern. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Ask our students, just turn around here and look at all these people out here so the people on television can see you too. <coughs> I want to come down. These people want to meet you folks. And we do want you to know that we do appreciate you coming tonight and helping us out with the pledge. So let's see what we can find out a little bit about each one of you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass the microphone down here, and I'll ask each one of you to indicate what your name is, where you go to school, what grade you're in. And we're off to a, a new year, a cold one so far, but a, but a new year. And uh, oftentimes what people do with a new year is they come up with some resolutions of things that they're going to do during the next year that... Maybe they didn't do last year, or maybe they want to make some improvement on it in some way, shape, or form. So if you have a New Year's resolution, I'd ask that you share that with the people here and the people that are watching on television. Again, it'll be your, your name, where you go to school, and the grade you're in. My name is Allison Norris, and I go to Reed Elementary. I'm in fifth grade. My name is Courtney Carpenter. I go to Roosevelt Elementary, and I'm also in fifth grade. My name is Sophie Michael. I go to Reed Elementary, and I'm in fifth grade. My name is Vinnie Bird, and I go to Roosevelt School, and I'm in fourth grade. My name is Logan Pinkerton, and I go to Reed School, and I'm in fifth grade. And the other thing I have here for you tonight is I, I have a certificate of appreciation. So we do, again, we do appreciate you coming down and, and taking the time out and visiting with us. So I'll pass these down to each one of you. Okay, if we could have a little applause for our students here tonight. Appreciate it. Okay, now it's time. You folks want to go home and do whatever you're going to do? Do a little studying tonight or whatever? That's your New Year's. Feel free to do so or watch TV. You don't have to sit here with all these people for the next two hours. So again, thanks. Have a great evening. Hey, Greg, Walter, want to come on up? I have a proclamation that I'm going to read here tonight. I'll read the proclamation, then I'll present the proclamation, and Greg will have a few words to share with us tonight about some of the things that you're doing. The proclamation has to do with big brothers and big sisters of the Fox Valley region. Whereas, in its 48th year history, Big Brothers, Big Sisters of the Fox Valley region has helped establish more than 8,500 friendships between caring, responsible mentors and children in need of guidance each year. And whereas the dedicated Big Brothers, Big Sisters, and Big Couples annually invest many hours of their time 
in the lives of their young friends. And whereas Big Brothers Big Sisters of the Fox Valley Regions partners with local schools and provides mentors in a safe environment to many local youth through mentoring programs and 50 Bigs in 50 Days campaign. And whereas the time invested in the lives of little brothers and little sisters pays great dividends to society by greatly reducing the likelihood that these children will experiment with drugs and alcohol, skip school, lie to adults, or engage in violent and delinquent behavior. And whereas, by providing these children with tutorial, educational, cultural, social, and recreational activities, which may not be available to them through other means, Big Brothers, Big Sisters of the Fox Valley region helps improve a child's self-confidence, self-image, and put confidence in their future. And whereas, when the children feel better about themselves, they perform better in school, are more optimistic about their future, more willing to attempt new challenges, and are better prepared to function in society and the workforce. <coughs> now, therefore, I, Burke Tower, Mayor of the City of Oshkosh, do hereby proclaim the week of January 18 through January 24, 2015, as Big Brothers Big Sisters Week in the Fox Valley region and encourage all citizens of the city of Oshkosh to support Big Brothers, Big Sisters of the Fox Valley region in their voluntary efforts and officially recognize the service of these volunteers that they give to children. So I want to thank you for that. Sent you with the proclamation. I'd like to say a few words. Why don't you introduce the two of you? And Absolutely. Um, thank you, Mayor, Mayor Tower. Uh, Greg Waller, I serve as Executive Director for Big Brothers, Big Sisters. And to my left here is uh, Lori Alltrade, who is our um, lead, ma lead match specialist. And uh, I want to thank you for honoring us today and uh, presenting this. Uh, we are in the middle of our 50 Bigs in 50 Days uh, campaign, which is a recruitment <coughs> campaign. We're recruiting additional Bigs to serve uh, children in the community that are looking for a mentor. So if you've ever thought uh, about becoming a Big, uh, please check us out on our website at um, bbbsfbr dot com. So uh, we hope that uh, you consider becoming a big and uh, we'd like to see you uh, be part of our organization. And thank you for this opportunity. And our thanks to the organization, to each of you for all you do for the children in the area. Thank you very much. Okay, next thing on the agenda is we have a presentation here tonight, and I'm going to ask uh, the city manager to introduce our presenter. The uh, presentation has to do with a visioning study that was undertaken for Oshkosh as we begin to look ahead to our future. Talk a little bit about the study and the results. So, Thank you, Mr. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Uh, Eric Ball is the executive director with the East Central Wisconsin Regional Planning Commission. Uh, periodically, East Central will uh, as part of uh, the dues that are paid on our behalf by Winnebago County, they'll provide some services to their member organizations. And uh, the project that East Central has graciously agreed to do for us was Riverfront Visioning, which was something that the council was looking for. So uh, Eric and his staff have uh, put some uh, information together after a number of public workshops. I know many of the council members attended. And Eric's going to give a little briefing on, on where we were. Uh, this is a truncated version. I've made sure Eric knew that. He actually made a presentation to the Planning Commission back in December. So uh, if you like what you heard from Eric and you want to hear more, I would suggest that you go back in the archives to take a look at the December 16th Planning Commission meeting. And with that, I'll turn it over to Mr. Fowle. Thank you, Mr. Roloff. Thank you, Mayor and Council, for some time this evening. Yes, this will be a truncated version, and I'll watch the clock right here. Um, I suspect that all of you have gotten a copy of the full report from the visioning session. Uh, I hope you read it cover to cover at some point. Don't expect that to be the case for this evening. Um, but I do want to give a, a short summary uh, of that. So uh, this really starts with what is a, a common issue in communities uh, of your size and in location uh, along the river. Rivers have long been an artery and a lifeblood of a city or a community. And like many communities, Transitions happen over time. Uh, industrial heyday brought riches to the community, and one of the reasons Oshkosh is here 
those uses have come and gone things have transformed from an industrial base to one that typically is neglected and, and certainly city of Oshkosh has done a lot over the least the past 10 years if not longer to try and transform that and turn a face back to the river and you see many communities doing that it's a challenge um, but I think people are, are wholeheartedly embracing the economic opportunity that exists now although it's different than what it has been historically so how do you plan for this? This is a large stretch of riverfront, very diverse, a lot of things going on, a lot of changes, a lot of opportunities. What do you need to know before you embark on, on perhaps a more expensive master planning process or even looking at doing updates to your comprehensive plan? And what's needed essentially is a vision. And as Mark had explained, through work that we have done at East Central, successful work in other communities, namely uh, Kimberly and the abandoned New Page Mill site. Uh, we've been doing work in New Holstein for the abandoned Tecumseh site and a handful of other projects. We've developed a process that we feel engages the citizenry more and really comes up with some good answers, good ideas uh, in a very simplistic form. I, I argue that as planners we get embroiled in the details too often and we don't step back and just ask the simple questions. It's amazing what kind of responses you can get. So we embarked on a process of, of developing three workshops um, with community development staff, um, figuring out the exercises, <coughs> mapping the interactive pieces that would really help to engage people. And we certainly appreciate the uh, city staff's support on this. We couldn't have done it without them. So we had three meetings back in August uh, during the summer. We intentionally chose the sites that were on the river so people could see that and kind of view uh, the river and get inspiration. We chose accessible sites and we did have them at, at a variety of times during the day. Two of them uh, during the early evening and one during the lunch hour along the river walk so we could try and tap into more of the business community. Not sure we were successful there, but it was nice to be outside. A little bit warm at that location though. Um, the the uh, workshops in total, we have documented 72 attendees, although we know there were more than that. There were probably a few folks that didn't sign in. We know there were couples that came in that probably signed in as one. So a conservative estimate could probably be as high as 90 people. Out of a community your size, that's rather small. But for these types of engagements, that's actually pretty good. I was still hoping for more, but uh, we had a pretty good uh, uh, representation out there from, from community members and those that even live beyond the community. When folks came in, we asked them if they'd identify generally where they live. And as you can see by the map, a good dispersion of folks from across the community and even some from outside of the community. The river is a feature that is used by more than those uh, that are just your residents and does draw people from outside. So we were pleased to see uh, the breadth of, of the participants. What we did essentially was conducted six tabletop exercises, had staff at each of them, and then compiled results and data which is shared in the report. So I want to highlight some of those out of each of the six exercises quickly. The first exercise was called who or what is Oshkosh? Really asking questions about the identity, the perceived identity, the perceptions of, of the community, whether it is historic in nature, <coughs> sort of the current, the here and now, or the future identity, the vision, what they want to see happen. And there's some really interesting things in here. And this is a synopsis of the top uh, statements that were filtered to the top. The rest are in an appendix. But the history, I think obvious things such as, as the sawdust city, the lumber industry, industrial uses, uh, and the like are noted there. Those are things that can be built upon, obviously. Uh, the current identity, event city, a number of events, activities related to the river. So there is a good association with the river. I was a little surprised that uh, item seven there is really, well, well, this was meant to generate positive comments, sort of a negative in there is, is the Pioneer Buckstaff sites or eyesores. Um, when that comes to the surface in terms of identity, it really, I think, reinforces the fact that those are critical sites and things that need to be dealt with because it does portray the image of the city. The future identity, um, not uh, um, really any surprises here. A lot of good thoughts, and I think these thoughts are reinforced quite well through the other exercises and data. 
in many of these cases i would argue the city is well on its way but there's always more work to do and perhaps there's even ways to do things better i'm always a fan of finding ways to improve things so this list is essentially your challenge as we see it it's not written as a long vision statement but these pieces are really what you ought to keep in mind as you pursue additional planning uh, on that site uh, the, the river corridor that is and you want to keep this momentum going obviously some of these things uh, lie deep in the heart of the participants and and I know they'd love to see action or movement <coughs> towards these things since they were asked um, over 650 individual responses from that exercise alone uh, I talked about the things that were, were kind of surfaced um, and you need to find ways to work with these things in all three categories you need to leverage the history you need to look at trying to be an active part of initiatives that are developed along the riverway the Fox Wisconsin Heritage Parkway for instance looking at promoting integrating that history into the river walk where opportunities present themselves you need to capitalize on those current events a lot of comments and thoughts in, in later exercises that talked about capturing the population that drives up and down 41 and doesn't even know there's a river or downtown here capitalizing on events EAA and the like and getting folks to realize hey there's something else cool over there draw them in could be signage could be other physical connections uh, and the like you need to make that river a destination I think slowly it's becoming that someone actually noted that well Oshkosh always wants to try and be Appleton which has a nice downtown not that you don't but it's not the same downtown you don't have the river in the same way Appleton does that is your asset that is what you need to capitalize on and focus attention on bring the other things along with it obviously some of the mapping exercise were quite interesting um, and we basically placed maps out for this exercise we wanted to know the extent of the influence of the river uh, and basically about 68 or 70 different boundaries were drawn compiled and then what's shown on here is what we feel is sort of the consensus of, of how folks define the river, how near or how far. And this could be used as a study area for master planning, a variety of uses or variations of it. Um, and, and looking at a couple of areas downtown in particular and along the south side, a little bit uh, iffy in terms of whether those are really considered part of the riverfront or not. They need further exploration or as they embark on other planning, Keep that in mind and, and think and talk about those types of things. We had an exercise called Connect the Dots, which basically asked the question of what areas in the city ought to be better connected to the river. That might be physically, might be socially, might be economically. Um, this is a composite map. I didn't put all the descriptors on here, but it shows a lot of things. General consensus of trying to get Menominee Park on the north and Fugelberg Park on the south, essentially the lakeshore to be defined as part of the river and make connections to those areas. A lot of support for a boardwalk on the south side of the lakeshore. Um, more direct need to uh, capture uh, people and bring them towards the river from Highway 41, from the events that I has mentioned. Um, moving across the river is pretty good in most spots, um, but some desire perhaps for a pedestrian connection between Highway 21 and Wisconsin Street Bridge. There's a long gap there. A lot of support for extending the river walk the entire length of the river. Moving along the river is very important. So what you can do with this, obviously, one of the first things that comes to mind, look at any and all plans you have that have transportation within it look at these ideas ensure some of these things are in there or perhaps are evaluated in the future uh, in terms of uh, projects or potential projects fourth exercise was called places and spaces we're basically asking folks what's your favorite place along the river everybody has one the composite map shows well over 150 features or locations that were identified by participants some of them more than others um, whether they're businesses such as the ground round and the patio for Tellos, Beckett's uh, facilities like the Leech Amphitheater, uh, certain segments of the Riverwalk, a lot of good things down there. And you want to take a look at that in terms of conservation, preservation, enhancement, improvement, or even rec uh, replication of some of those types of features or the feel that they give the, the, the person in other places along the riverfront. We asked the opposite question, what needs fixing? And no shortage of answers here. <laughs> um, but we try and do this in, in a positive light. 
And based on the number of responses, probably again an equal number, at least 100 different responses, um, the things that kind of came to the surface and ranked highly included more riverfront trail, riverwalk connections, there's certain spots, there's gaps, um, direct access to the water for watercraft and recreation, uh, improving upon that, and certainly redevelopment of key sites along the river, uh, Pioneer, Buckstaff site, the Geldwen site, Axeltec, and continuation of the Marion Road area. I know initiatives and things have been going on with some of those sites, so I think this helps support some of the past work, but obviously there's a lot more work to do. Exercise six was a worksheet-based exercise. There were four different land use types illustrated and a range of options or alternatives in terms of the intensity or style of development. Um, each person that participated filled out one or more of these and kind of gave their range. Um, but just very quickly, some of the things that came to the top in terms of numerical rankings, uh, in terms of new development for housing, preference for small multifamily housing versus um, larger residential structures or smaller duplexes or things of that nature, kind of keeping things at the medium scale. In terms of commercial and retail development, a strong preference for street-oriented commercial mixed-use development, not big boxes, um, not small freestanding uh, convenience <coughs> stores or things of that nature, but something that is pedestrian-oriented. Other employment types of uses uh, went more towards the larger light industrial research park type of building or office park development. Although I would caution you that being in a very urban environment, you probably want to maximize the use of the land and avoid uh, a lot of campus type feel. No disrespect to UWO, but uh, in a, an urban setting, you want to maximize that land. So be cautious with, with the space around such buildings. And then we asked about parking and a pretty strong preference in an urban environment for structured parking, above ground, multi-level structured parking, which again fits very well in a dense urban setting in terms <coughs> of maximizing land use and not wasting a lot with surface area parking. The last part of this exercise was simply a catch-all. What big ideas do you have? And many of the comments that were made tied back or reinforced items that were noted before. Um, but there are a handful of new ideas which uh, were identified in here. Some of those we tried to get participants to visualize. So there's a series of maps that kind of show location <coughs> and some notes. And then there's an appendix that has at least another 75 written comments of big ideas. Some of them um, perhaps uh, are feasible. Some might be very pie in the sky. That's not for us to determine that's for the Council Plan Commission staff to kind of sift through that and through other public planning processes vet those <laughs> things out. Um, some examples uh, of, of bigger ideas included a visitor center on the north end of Highway 41, uh, bridge, potential reuse of the golf course. That could be a political hot potato, I'm sure. But there are some that think that parts of that site or all that site could be put to a higher and better use. Um, other comments about more hotels or resorts microbreweries, other business types. So it's an interesting list of things that uh, has been uh, generated there. To wrap things up, one of the themes that we preach as planners recently is that of the concept of placemaking. And a lot of the information that was generated by the public, by the community, really has a place in this concept. And I think when it comes down to it, bottom line, people want a great place. And a great place will be vibrant, will be uh, economically successful, and there are ways to do that and ways to integrate that concept into the day-to-day -day planning, the ordinance development, and those kind of things. So we would encourage the city to look into this and look at how to capitalize on that concept. So just a couple parting thoughts. Remember, this vision wasn't done in a scientific <laughs> method. It is sort of random reality check at that point in time. But we do think that given the number of people that came out, the kind of engagement we have, there is some validity to this. I would feel pretty confident that most of the things in here are probably representative of the community as a whole. Um, I mentioned it before, but patterns start to emerge. You'll see that in different exercises, different comments. Um, and once those things are identified, they can gain momentum. So my advice would be not to sit on this too long 
do something with it or, or direct somebody else to do something with it um, and start that process of engagement for other planning. The comprehensive plan, you're going to embark on master planning. This is really a no-brainer that the consultant, whoever they may be, really ought to be trying to integrate as much as possible. So with that, I thank again the various staff that participated here and uh, certainly I'm available for questions. Council members have questions or comments? Just one quick one, Mr. Ray. Mr. Foley, thanks for your, your organization's work on this. It's appreciated. I, as you know, there's a number of concerted municipal efforts to, to revision and, and rebuild uh, water, uh, riverfront waterways in, in Green Bay, De Pere, mm -hmm. Little Chute, uh, Kakana, Appleton, Menasha, where you guys are located there. And, uh, and of course, you said Kimberly may be uh, working on one as well. Um, is there, I, I, I guess I'm, I'm curious if, if your organization has been involved doing something similar to this in any of those communities and is there any benefit to attempting to at least share information among communities? Are there similarities I guess that, that can be drawn upon, efficiencies that can be created? By, uh, and you, you did mention I know the Fox Wisconsin Heritage Parkway but that's obviously a much larger effort uh, in its scope. That is an excellent point you bring up, and I can appreciate that. Um, oftentimes, communities are competitive with one another, and they kind of hold their secrets and their plans close to one another, even though the technically public documents. Um, but with the sheer amount of activity happening along the riverfront in the communities, it might be a very good idea to form a little uh, collaboration or a committee or, or a group that meets periodically, whether it's the administrators of those communities, to share information. Um, they're each trying to achieve very similar things. We think or would hope that there's enough room in the marketplace for all of these projects to have success over time. Um, and we shouldn't be making mistakes that others have made in this day and age. Um, so I think it would be worthwhile reaching out to those communities. The city of Appleton, I believe, is planning on embarking on a master plan process for their downtown, which I would presume will include the riverfront as well, probably within the next year. And so uh, maybe they can learn a few things from, from what you guys have done here, too. Mm -hmm. but Great, thank you. Good idea. Uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just wondering if you had any sort of information on the age ranges of the participants of the study. Uh, I know I, I brought my nine-year-old with me to do a little bit of work because I wanted his opinion on some of these things. And I was just wondering if there were other children involved and, and, then, and then on the other end as well, how well, elderly Well, I'll tell you, I couldn't tell the nine-year-old results from the 40-year-olds. <laughs> um, and I think that's the beauty of the process. We didn't have a lot of young people, admittedly. I think most of it was probably... Uh, folks uh, at, at least 30 and over, the bulk probably kind of being in that, that middle area, 35 to 60, somewhere in there. Uh, it would have been great to have additional children there and younger folks who assumably are going to inherit the river um, and you're building it for them. Uh, it would be a great idea to maybe even look at a little school project, see if there's some time in the day where some <coughs> little exercises like this could be done with the kids or different school groups or, or nonprofit organizations. Um, planning isn't rocket science, I'll be the first to admit, and sometimes the kids have the best ideas. idea. <laughs> or the worst ones, one of the two. Thank you. So, no, good point, thank you. Other comments, questions? Just a for comment. Her? First, appreciate East Central doing this, this work. But I think um, I was part of the visioning and went down there and, and worked on it. Um, but I think our strategic plan is focusing a lot on what this study sh came up with already. Uh, we're <coughs> continuing to work on the riverfront, which ties into the tribal trail, which, which goes across 41. We are uh, um, looking at RFPs to do a parking study in the central downtown area that will affect the part of the riverfront when that study gets completely done. So to his comment of not sitting on things, I think we've already taken some actions based on some of the things that came out of their study. So it, it reconfirms what we're, we're working with, with our staff, with our, our things. Um, you know, we, we approved an apartment complex on the riverfront, which mixes in with the mixed-use housing. Um, some of us were at the uh, West Side Association's meeting the other day, and uh, Morgan Properties talked about some things that they're working on. Uh, some other um, businesses talked about some things that are happening. Um, Mr. Larson talked about some things that are happening at City Center and expansion there. So I think we are already taking some of the things that East Central has pointed out through this study that we need to focus on in, in our area. And we had the story on the Buckstaff's property, thanks to Mr. Bowyer and the Northwestern, but the citizens know what we're doing there and 
we haven't had an update and got some big news with um, the Pioneer and some stuff. So I think um, the study is confirming that we're moving in the right direction and continuing. And to have that study as, as a template is, is very important as we move forward with our projects in the riverfront. So thank you very much. Welcome. Anybody else? <clears throat> One other comment, too. Uh, it, it, it pretty much reinforces the plan that was done about 10 years ago for Marion Road. I and mean, there's a <coughs> lot of similarity, similarities about the density and so forth. But as Steve said, there's a lot of stuff that's going on. Uh, we're referring to our downtown as more the central city that has a river running through it. We're trying to get away from this north side, south side, finally. <laughs> um, um, but we're, we're also working uh, with the state and so forth to expand the historic district to include buildings like our library, uh, the Northwestern building, the old post office, is a neoclassical district. So we're, we're working on these things, you know, that are on really both sides of the river. And then we're, we're now working with the uh, Convention of Visitors Bureau, the museum, and so forth, the bid board, to begin developing historic tourism in the city, the bulk of which will focus on the central city again because of the age of the buildings and the architecture. So there's a lot of things, as Steve said, that are going on that are uh, they're, they're happening very quickly now. So, but, but thank you, Eric. This is a good presentation. My pleasure. And uh, I always like to end these by saying, don't thank me, but thank Winnebago County, who is a member of the commission, for <laughs> us the ability to do these projects. So, um, but uh, th th these are actually the fun kind of things to do, and and very enlightening. And we hope that the information, uh, even though it's subject to interpretation, uh, is valuable for you, reinforces some of the good things the city has done and, and keeps you pushing forward. That didn't hear any real complaints out of folks that participated, <laughs> if that makes you feel better. Might have some physical improvements that need to be made, but but no complaints. Yeah, well, not, just one other quick comment, too, that there, so much of the country was founded on rivers, which were industrial, they've all become industrial is gone and there are communities that are investing huge sums of money to turn them into more recreational uh, destinations away from the, the uh, industrial so I think it'd be wise for all of us to kind of keep an eye out what other communities are doing bait located on old industrial rivers to see what they've done that's yep. working huh? that's working the <laughs> is uh, <laughs> yeah Augusta is one yeah <laughs> Okay, a couple things. I want to thank you, Eric, and East Central for, for conducting the study for us. We very much appreciate that. And I want to play up on a comment you made and what the, the two Steves made uh, having to do with, with looking ahead. You, you do a study and you got to look ahead and see, see what comes next. And uh, one of the things I think <coughs> uh, the city has done a great job with, the staff and the various departments have done a great job with, and really the council is, is developing a number of different plans that are out there. Steve made comments. I think our challenge, our challenge is to put this all together because as Mr. Cummings said there and somebody else, there are lots of dollars to be involved to get from here to there. Um, and we got all these plans. So somehow or another, and I'm going to challenge Mr. Roloff with this one, um, how do we begin to bring these plans together so we can come up with an implementation plan? We we all these things take a lot of capital dollars we know our capital dollars are limited and we have some other areas for them how some idea on how we can bring these together so we have sort of a set of priorities as we look out 10 to 15 years as we begin to look for help say from the foundation figuring out what our high priority items are in 16 17 18 19 um as, as the case may be because i think that's going to be our real challenge because there are lots of ideas and lots of things going on but I think we're going to have to bring some things together and prioritize to figure out how we get some dollars to make get the most smack and do things in the right order. Well, the key is to develop a plan uh, based on the visioning. Now we have a framework that we would like to see the plan developed under. We have the downtown action plan that was done back in 2001. And for the most part, we implemented that plan, which is to the credit of everybody that was involved. And so now what the next phase is, is I think we need to take a look at what new things we want to look what's what's the next new thing we want to achieve and I think part of it is uh, you know developing a plan I remember part of the impetus for this was a discussion at the plan commission what, about a specific development and the, the idea was does this fit in with what we want to accomplish um, this doesn't necessarily give you an absolute you must do this you must do that but it gives you a framework and I think one of the things it does it tells you what you don't want 
Um, and those are things we want to we want to be very careful that when somebody comes in with a development proposal, if there's something we don't want, you're probably going to see it through the visioning process. But we want to maintain flexibility. There's a lot of open space that we have out on our riverfront right now. We want to make sure that whatever we put in there is of high quality. So as we develop plans, we may need to have some thresholds for minimum uh, investment per acre, things like that, because we want to make sure that whatever we do, we get some return on our investment. And it was interesting to note that in Mr. Fowle's presentation, um, I think even the public recognizes they don't want small little lots, but they don't want anything too big either. Uh, three, uh, two to four stories seem to be something with residential. They w they know they want to have that we need some intensity to get some value out of it, but we don't want it to be uh, to overshadow everything else we have. So this is a good start. The downtown action plan or the new, what we're new we're calling it is going to be part of that, and then parking is going to be part of that as well because we have to make sure that our infrastructure is going to be able to meet the needs of whatever. Uh, practical plans we put in to the the dreams that we've identified in the in the vision study long way of saying we'll see <laughs> I would if I might uh, I would argue that at least at this stage the visioning and maybe even the first steps of master planning whatever process is chosen I wouldn't let money be too much of a limiting factor if it's not on paper and it's a good idea uh, it's not you know I should take that back if it's a good idea and it's not on paper it's not going to happen um, you need to get those things on paper. And I always look at Madison as a perfect example. Monona Terrace, Frank Lloyd Wright's building, they tried to plan and build that for 100 years. It took a while, but it finally happened. Yeah. So okay. think about that. Okay. Again, I think. Darren wants to say another comment. One other comment, too, and I think we've had this discussion before. Whatever we do with the riverfront and the, the old downtown, it's going to be here for 50, 75 years. So we better be patient and think it through before we start to do brick and mortar because we will, we won't, but <laughs> children will live with it. You and I won't. You and I won't. <laughs> okay, again, Eric. Uh, Thank you again. Thanks for taking on the challenge. Join us in a limited time, too. It's a Have a good evening. On. Great job. Thanks. Okay, that takes us to citizen statements to the council. This is when people have an opportunity to make, come up to the microphone, which is open up here. If there's something in the city that's going well, then you want to comment on it. We love that. But also, if you have some concerns about something in the city, we'd like to hear about that. We do have a few ground rules that go with it. The first one is, is that if you come up to the microphone at this point in time, we want to, uh, you to provide your, your name and your address. Limit your comments to no more than five minutes. Don't talk about other things on the agenda tonight. There'll be time for those things later. Uh, when we talk about those agenda items, speak directly to the council and no electioneering. So if anybody would like to come forward and speak to the microphone at this point in time, feel free. I see no one coming forward. There'll be another opportunity at the end of the meeting to do the same thing. Okay, so that takes us to the consent agenda items. What I do with the, the consent agenda items are made up of a number of what we administration feels are non-controversial items. And therefore, we tend to look at these items as a package. So we go through them as a package and we'll vote for them on, as a package, unless either a citizen, uh, one of you, or a council member decides that they want to have an item pulled from the consent agenda and have it considered separately. And if, if that request is made, we will pull that particular item and consider it separately. Where the process is going to work, I'm going to read through the items. And as I'm reading through the items, if you'd like to comment on an item as I read that item, I'd appreciate it if you'd come up to the microphone. Once I've read through the items and gotten citizens' comments on all the items, we'll bring it back to the council for discussion by the council. Mr. Mayor? Yes. Uh, I received a couple requests to pull the uh, resolution 15-14, the Menominee Park Zoo Master Plan, from the consent agenda. I have a feeling a few folks want to talk about it and just comment on it. So probably best just to remove that from consent right away. Okay, that's item 17. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I, I'll strike that. Three. <laughs> 17 is pulled from the consent agenda, so I won't read it in the uh, consent agenda. We'll consider it separately. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to start reading through. Approval of bills presented by the finance director. Approval of cash report from November 2014. Receipt of claims filed with the city's insurance company, Travis Wolt, for alleged sewer backup. Resolution 15-01, rescind 
Personal Property Taxes, Bay Moon Massage and Therapeutic Body Work, 923 Oregon Street. Resolution 15-02, approved partial rescission of Resolution 14-532, awarding bids for chemicals for water filtration and wastewater treatment plant and award sodium hydroxide 30% portion to Hydrite Chemical Company. Resolution 15-03, uh, renew Bird City, Wisconsin designation, designate May 2, 2015 as International Migratory Bird Day. Resolution 15-04, approve setting up public hearing date to vacate portion of 1400 block of Mount Vernon Street. Resolution 15-05, approve conditional use permit for extension of existing telecommunications tower, 1821 Jackson Street. <coughs> Resolution 15-06, approve conditional use permit, plan development, architectural design for construction of a utility structure, sanitary pump at 1975 Snell Road. Resolution 15-07, approve conditional use permit, plan development for commercial restaurant with drive through 1090 North Washburn Avenue, North Washburn Street. Resolution 15-08, approval of change order number one for public works contract number 12-21 with Badger Laboratories and Engineering Inc. for industrial wastewater sampling and analysis services. Resolution 15-09, approval of amendment to agreement for engineering services with Brown and Caldwell for development of a stormwater management plan for Ferno Avenue area watershed in the North Industrial Park. Resolution 15-10, approve professional services professional service agreement with AECOM for parking lot development at Riverside Park Phase 2 and parking lot connection for Bolt Works property. Resolution 15-11, approval of engineering services agreement with Brown and Caldwell for design and bid support services for the Ferno Avenue watershed, North Main Street area stormwater detention basin. <coughs> Resolution 15-12, approval of agreement for engineering services with Gramer and Associates for design and bidding services for West Ferno Avenue concrete paving project. <coughs> Resolution 15-13, approval of agreement for engineering services with speedy clean drain and sewer for sanitary and storm sewer main and lateral televising. Uh, resolution 15-14, that'll be the zoo plan, which will be pulled for separate, considera separate consideration. Resolution 15-15, approve intergovernmental cooperation agreement between the City of Oshkosh and the Oshkosh Area School District for operation of Pollock Community Water Park. Resolution 15-16, authorize <coughs> the filing of applications for federal operating and capital assistance, state operating assistance, and county transportation assistance. Resolution 15-17, approve agreements for transportation services with Winnebago County. Resolution 15-18, approve 2015 software maintenance agreements for IT division, the ESRI Inc. and Harris Computer Systems, data now. Resolution 15-19, award bid for City Hall fourth floor HVAC improvements for general services to Hertman Mechanical. I'm going to do some special events. I won't use the word special event on each one of these. Resolution 1520, Rotary Club of Oshkosh to utilize Leach Amphitheater and City <coughs> Streets for their snowflake shuffle of February 7, 2015. Resolution 15-21, Oshkosh Southwest Rotary to utilize Menominee Park for their battle on Bago, February 27 and 28, 2015. Resolution 15-21, 2-2, UW Oshkosh Student Recreation to utilize city streets for their UW Oshkosh Shamrock Shuffle, 5K Run Walk, March 14, 2015. Resolution 15-23, Oshkosh Fast Club to utilize REITs Diamonds at Menominee Park for their Greater Raider Open, June 5, 6, and 7, 2015. Resolution 15-24, disallowance of claim by Isaiah Broilard and Christopher Boylard. Resolution 15-25, approved combination Class B licenses, Class B fermented malt, and Class C wine licenses, special Class B <coughs> licenses, and operator licenses, and taxi cab driver <coughs> license. <coughs> okay, if anybody, uh, if I went too fast and you get a chance to come forward, the microphone still remains open if you want to comment on <coughs> any of these items. We'll ask that one be removed. 
Seeing no one come forward, I'll bring it back to the council and ask the council if they have questions or discussion on any of the items or want anything else pulled other than item 17, which is resolution 15-14. Mr. Herman. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, resolution 15-05, I just want to make a comment that's con connected to the uh, cell, com cell tower by the uh, McDonald's restaurant. I received a phone call late this afternoon from the president of the church council, the church that's nearby with some concerns from their elderly members of the church um, concerned about the the tower and the height, et cetera. Um, there were questions I could not answer, so I just wanted council to know I received the phone call and I referred him to uh, Jim Weinman, uh, who sent us a memo that was included with our paperwork and his phone number, and told him to contact him with his questions and concerns because they dealt with uh, power of the tower, et cetera, um, affecting the hearing loop that the church has for the elderly folks and would there be problems with uh, pacemakers and all those types of microwave things that cell towers put out that I could not answer so just to let council know I referred them to the person that uh, put it in here but I told them that they gave us assurances that those types of things from his memo were not a problem just so council is aware that I did receive a phone call okay, also any comments Comment on this item. This item came up before on the height yeah. of the tower, and that's really a change in the height, in case anybody recalls. I, I do recall that discussion. The council basically voted down taking the height from what was about 50 feet to 80 feet. In the meantime, since that happened the last time, there's been some new state statutes which indicate that councils don't have the power to do so. Yep, that's, that's what right. I told them to. So <laughs> like is so often the case, the state tells us what we can do and what we can't do and tell us what we have to do. And in this case, we do have to take a vote, so it's not taken from us. We're still responsible. Uh, but we do not have the ability to say no, quite frankly. Anything else for anybody? If not, I'll ask for a motion a second on the consent agenda minus item 17, which is resolution 1514. So moved. Second. second. Moved and seconded. Any more questions or discussion on the consent agenda minus resolution 1514? If not, I'll ask the clerk to take the roll call vote <coughs> on the consent agenda minus resolution 1514. Pansky? Aye. Fitzgerald? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Herman? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Tower? Aye. Curate six. Okay, we did have one item removed <coughs> from the consent agenda, as I mentioned a couple of times there. That is <coughs> Resolution 1514, and so I'm going to read it now. If you'd like to comment on it, feel free to come up to the microphone. The microphone remains open. Resolution 1514, approved City of Oshkosh Menominee Park Zoo Master Plan. Anybody like to come forward? Seeing no one coming forward, I will bring it back uh, to the council for a motion and a second on resolution 15-14. So moved. Second. And moved and seconded. Discussion. Mr. Cummings, like to comment. Uh, thank you, Mayor Tower. Uh, I'm a member of the board of the Zoo Oshkosh Zoological Society, so I was part of this whole task force, including other board members, some of which are here tonight. Um, the community was invited for their input on this project, and if I assume everyone had a chance to pick up their the report. I would encourage all the citizens in Oshkosh to stop by City Hall to get a copy of the report. Um, this is another thing we talk about, quality of life. And uh, you know, I think we've all enjoyed, enjoyed the zoo you know, for years and years. Um, this takes the zoo up to a higher and a different level. And two things that came out very strong during the task force was the educational possibilities and an aquarium. And by aquarium, I don't mean the ones we all had in our bedrooms as kids. These are major, major aquariums. Um, uh, the part of the plan will include for an education center that will, some of it will go over the existing pond. And working with the consultants, uh, and we had uh, the director of the museum come in, and they, their discussions to move the wetlands exhibit from the entrance of the museum to the educational building at the zoo. And uh, one of our board members is a deputy uh, <coughs> superintendent of the school, so he was very much behind the yeah. educational portion, but everyone was, including the parks board. Um, and one of the consultants on this uh, that we hired to work on this project designed the Mississippi River Museum in Dubuque, Iowa. And um, I've been there a couple of times. I'm not a fisherman, 
but it's an, an incredible tourist draw, what they've done with the history of, of that portion of the Mississippi River and the fishing. Um, and so I would encourage anyone, if you're in the Dubuque area, to stop by the uh, Mississippi River Museum. But it'll be that quality and caliber of an attraction in the city. And um, I think the whole task force, uh, the other members of the society, just put a lot of uh, time and effort into this. It's a well thought out plan. And again, I encourage anyone who hasn't looked at the, uh, the, the document to stop by City Hall. But the clerk's office have copies? Yes, we do the clerk's office so uh, I'm, I'm fully obviously in support of this this plan it, it's great other comments mayor yes Mr. Arnold. just one comment <coughs> um, this is a copy it's a excellent document as uh, council member uh, Cummings has said I I think we as a city owe a couple people a huge <coughs> debt of thanks uh, for making a zoo free to all citizens of Oshkosh and that's uh, Bill and Penny Herrenberg, right. who makes a sizable donation to the city of Oshkosh to make it free to all of our citizens to go to the master park, to go to the zoo that allow us to continue to focus on expanding our zoo. Um, it, it, it has come a long ways in my time here in Oshkosh, and, and uh, last year we opened the otter exhibit, I think it was last year. Last year. And so that that's excellent, and I think our parks department uh, staff does uh, excellent work there, and uh, to have the um, the quality that we have for a city our size, it, it, it's pretty unique. And um, so I, I think um, you, you, Eric, if you if you know Bill and Penny Herberg or you see them or you meet them at some yeah. function, thank thank them very much because not only our zoo, but they they made a donation to the sheriff's office to purchase another canine. So they are very involved with the um, animals and animals um, at the zoo and everything else. So um, we owe a <coughs> great debt to them and. Appreciate their work, Tom, Tom Herenberg. Tom, I'm sorry. Tom Herenberg. I know I kept saying Bill. You're right, Tom, <laughs> and I should know that because I know him very well. So I apologize for that, Tom. <laughs> but it's Tom Penny Herenberg. So thank you very much. Yeah. And, and, oh, oops, sorry, Mr. Mayor. I just want to <clears throat> echo the sound sentiments that Mr. Cummings had uh, from the Park Advisory Board perspective. We had uh, three different meetings on this matter. Went through a couple different revisions. Uh, so it was uh, heavily looked at. Uh, uh, thanks to Mr. Mauer and his staff. Uh, for, for working with the consultant and community groups uh, as well as the Zoological Society to, to, to really ensure that every opinion that, that should have been weighed into this was weighed into it. Um, I, I, won't, I won't reiterate what Mr. Cummings said about the new amenities. It, it does offer more opportunity for parking out at the zoo, which uh, sometimes on nice days, uh, attractive days out there can be a bit of a challenge to get something close. Uh, so there will be some enhanced parking, but uh, we're still preserving the, the, the beauty that the site and the, the, the park as a whole have while enhancing uh, what's going to be you know one of the more preeminent zoos in in this part of Wisconsin thank you mayor I uh, just wanted to recognize um, sum up what uh, mr. Herman and mr. Cummings had said as well there was a significant amount of time that went into the plan and I know we had talked about it for a long time just so to see an actual document uh, is pretty exciting and to see, um, and, it, and that's exactly what it is, is a plan. We have what we have now. It's getting from point A to point B. And I think it's exciting. There's some really neat ideas in here. We'll need to work on how we're going to fund them, um, you know, and, and that'll be uh, a challenge that we'll look forward to doing over, over the years to come. But I think it really indicates that there's a vision you know that the that the zoo and the park won't stay stagnant that will evolve and and move on to greater things and keep it exciting for you know generations to come in Ashgash. so thank you to all those that invested a substantial amount of time and energy into this it's exciting again I would thank folks also and I think Charles Osby makes a point that this in many ways now is, is a vision it's a vision and also a plan to get there so it's more than just some ideas out there uh, and I think that's that's what we have to do, but it will take some time. It'll also take some public-private partnerships as we go along, I'm sure. Uh, so it's not going to happen tomorrow, but it it pays that we look ahead and look ahead to the next generation. It was mentioned in the visioning before, so I think this is fantastic. Okay, if there are no further comments, I'm going to ask the clerk to take the roll call vote on uh, <coughs> Resolution 15-14. Pansky? Aye. Fitzgerald? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Herman? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Tower. Aye. Carried six.
Okay, that takes us to new ordinances. And these are new ordinances which have to be read at two council meetings, so we're going to go through these one by one. If you'd like to comment on one of these as I read it, please feel free to come up to the microphone. Uh, the council will not be voting on these items tonight. They'll be voted on at the next meeting after the second reading. So yeah, if a thought comes to you over the next couple of weeks, you can still come back and make a comment on it at the next meeting. Okay, the first one is Ordinance 15-26, Approval of Parking Regulation Changes on Commerce Street, Evans Street, and Mallard Street, Mallard Avenue. Would I like to come forward? Okay. Then we'll go to Ordinance 15-27, Amend Section 6-14, Rabies Vaccination to Allow Veterinarian Technicians to Administer Rabies Vaccine. And I'd like to come forward to speak to that. Okay, I see no one coming forward, so we'll move on from there. Again, these will be read at the next council meeting, and they will uh, be taken up for possible... Mr. Oh, Mayor, if yeah, I may, sure. uh, make a motion sure. to waive the rules on um, Ordinance 15-26. Um, the Transit Advisory Board um, made these recommendations on the parking to coincide with a move of, a, of bus stops. Um, just so we can get this action in place, I would appreciate being able to vote on that item tonight. I'd like to make a motion. I would. The rules vote on. Is there a second? Second. Moved and second. Anybody like to comment on that, on, on having the vote taken tonight as opposed to having it taken next time in order to provide better coordination? Just off of just, that. I'll bring it back. One more. Okay. Just, just one second. We'll just see. Nobody wants to comment on it. I'll bring it back to the council. Okay. Yes. Thank you. To go on with uh, Councilor Pansky's comments, the traffic review also approved the, uh, the other part of that ordinance, which deals with uh, parking along. Um, by Carmel Chris Shop and City Center. So the Parking um, Utility Board also, and Traffic Review also uh, approved those changes. So. Okay. Okay, I'll ask clerk to take the roll call vote on waiving the rules and voting on 15-26 this evening. Pansky? Aye. Fitzgerald? Aye. Cumming? <coughs> Aye. Herman? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Tower? Aye. Carried six. Okay, so we've waived the rules. We will consider it, so. Uh, I would look for a motion and a second on Ordinance 15-26. So moved. Second. Been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, I'll ask the clerk to take the roll call vote on Ordinance 15-26. Pansky? Aye. Fitzgerald? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Herman? Aye. <coughs> Allison Osby? Aye. Tower? Aye. Carried six. Okay, that takes us to new resolutions. On these, we'll go through them one by one. Again, I will read them. If you want to make a comment on it, the microphone remains open to you. First one, uh, resolution 15-28, approve and execute relocation order, determination of necessity to acquire property on west side of North Main Street and east side of Jackson Street, north of West, west Furno Avenue, town of Oshkosh. Anybody like to comment on that? Seeing no one come forward, I'll bring it back to the council for a motion and a second. So moved. moved. <coughs> second. Been moved and seconded. Discussion? Concerns? Questions? Mr. Herman. Yeah, could I have Mr. Burridge come up a minute, please? Mr. Burrich, according to this um, resolution, we're, we're going to be um, uh, basically taking under like, almost like an imminent domain, because right? the property owner doesn't want to sell it, right? From the minutes I get out of the Planning Commission, or how are we going about moving forward with this? I mean, it's for a de detention pond. I understand that we need it. It's part of the TIF district for that business industrial park. Um, but are we are we forced to be buying it from the gentleman, or how, how what do we? It wasn't real clear. I can probably this goes through the plan commission because that's required by law this action tonight is a relocation order this is the first step in what could be an eminent domain proceeding but it doesn't necessarily work out that way what this is is our officially stating our interest in possibly acquiring this property so there's a lot of caveats there we may decide later on that there's not value in doing that as we do additional engineering investigations but Based on our preliminary review uh, with our consulting engineers, this is a location we believe is appropriate. So by law, we need to let uh, the public know and put this uh, on notice that 
we may be interested in this property. Uh, we know that some folks came to the plan commission meeting, expressed their concern about selling it. Uh, we are aware of that, but we're still required to do this relocation order so that there's no question later on that they weren't put on notice. This is really just the first step in what could potentially be a long process. And you know some of the acquisitions we've done, sometimes they can take a very long time. But we got to start with this tonight. So is it like by approving this, it's more of a, a study of the area that, or we already have identified it as right. a property we need. Right. So it's really a property we're interested in, um, but we're not, this is not acquiring the property. Uh, before we do that, we have to provide <coughs> them with a, um, an appraisal of the property. They may look at that appraisal and say, we'll take it and we close on it, we come back to council to approve it. Uh, they may ask for a second appraisal, which we pay for on their behalf. Uh, they get to choose somebody of, the, of their own choosing. Uh, and based on those two appraisals, we may negotiate, and as you know, that we've had closed sessions where we've discussed those um, negotiating strategies. But eventually, we come back and either get counsel to, to do an eminent domain if we can't come to an agreement, or we come back and say, we did reach agreement, and here's the price that we're recommending based on the negotiations. And we use a gentleman by the name of Randy Moss uh, out of Green Bay who assists us with uh, the acquisition if it gets that far. Okay. All right. I guess... You didn't have to say anything there. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Any other comments, yeah. questions, discussion at this point? Seeing none, I'll ask the clerk to take the roll call vote on resolution 15 28. Pansky? Aye. Fitzgerald? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Herman? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Tower? Aye. Carried six. Okay, that takes us to resolution 15 29. <laughs> Approve Labor Agreement Transit Division. AFSCME, ask me, local 796 AFL CIO for 2015 to 2017. Anybody like to comment on that? Okay, if not, I'll bring it back to the council for a motion and a second on resolution 15 29. So moved. Second. Discussion. Seeing no discussion, I'll ask the clerk to take the roll call vote on resolution 15 29. Pansky? Aye. Fitzgerald? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Herman? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Tower? Aye. Carried six. Okay, the next thing is it takes us to resolution 15 30, approved city manager performance evaluation for 2014 and 2015 <coughs> compensation. Before I ask for comments on that, I'm going to ask for the deputy mayor to make a few comments on this. One of the functions of the, or the actually the primary function of, of the deputy mayor is conduct, uh, to lead the evaluation annually of the city manager. That process took place over what, a couple of months, uh, November and December. And then uh, tonight's kind of the final report and, and the out outcome of that. So, Ms. Allison Osby. Thank you, Mayor. You want to make. Thank you. Um, I'd like to thank uh, my fellow council members, uh, those that were involved in the process of, of doing the city, man or city manager evaluation uh, for Mr. Roloff. Um, through the consensus of council and through the process, um, we kept the process the same other than this year we did do a uh, informal mid-year review to touch base uh, with Mark regarding um, performance so that we could indicate if there was any areas of concerns and certainly, um, certainly give him the pat on the back that he deserved regarding the areas that we were highly impressed with uh, to move forward because obviously you know we want our city manager to be successful for the year so consensus statement uh, which is provided within the packet but for those who are listening or watching on TV that haven't seen it uh, our statement to the public is Mark Roloff Oshkosh city manager demonstrated throughout 2014 dedication to the community commitment to focus on council directed goals and policy issues and a vision to keep the city on a positive and progressive path Mr. Roloff continues to operate with genuine enthusiasm and energy. He effectively communicates to the citizens, staff, and council in a manner that reflects his professionalism. The council directive is for Mr. Roloff to continue to be present and visible in the community, meet the needs of his staff, and follow the strategic plan. The council realizes that the city of Oshkosh is growing, that presents both opportunities and challenges. The council feels Mr. Roloff maintains the skills, attitude, and vision to be a successful city manager for the city of Oshkosh. So with those statements, therefore, we certainly offered Mr. Roloff 
another contract in which uh, we were we are pleased to announce that he accepted okay now if anybody would like to come forward to comment on the aspect of the city managers performance evaluation process related there too feel free to see no one come forward I'll bring it back to council for a motion and a second on resolution 15-30 so moved second any discussion <coughs> further discussion <clears throat> been a lot of discussion over the last couple of months. <laughs> well, okay. Yeah, we had talked about. I'll ask uh, uh, Clark take the roll call vote on resolution 15 30. Pansky? Aye. Fitzgerald? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Herman? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Tower? Aye. Carried six. Okay, that takes us to council discussion, <coughs> direction to the city manager, and future agenda items. Number one, go EDC update. Just briefly, uh, GoEDC is continuing to uh, touch base with some key investors that they want to, they've targeted. Uh, we're going to be unrolling and unveiling uh, a broader fundraising effort that is going to be more general in nature after uh, GoEDC has identified some of their the, the larger investors. That's a typical strategy with any major fundraising effort. Um, meanwhile, uh, we're sending out invoices to some of those larger investors so that when we un un unveil everything, you'll see some of the larger investors. Um, meanwhile, uh, we're starting the uh, recruitment, and now that's the first of the year, starting the recruitment for uh, the CEO. Uh, Mr. Wyman is serving as the interim CEO, uh, and he'll remain in that place until, until we find a, uh, a permanent CEO. And we've actually uh, started to recruit an interview for a uh, communications manager, <coughs> and I think we're going to be making a a decision on that shortly so uh, things are progressing very well and uh, I'm pleased that uh, that's moving forward okay. well, those of you out there this is the greater Oshkosh Economic Development Corporation which is a, a number of folks coming together from throughout the city to, to try and coordinate economic development efforts in the community as we move forward so it's off the ground now on, on January 1 and operating something took a while to put together so thank you Future agenda items. The first one, Grand Opera House Workshop, originally was scheduled for January 20th. Uh, found out after that was scheduled that there are some issues with the availability of people on the Opera House board. So the city managers recommended a date change to February 9 or February 11. So I open it up for discussion. I will say that I did talk with uh, uh, Mr. Peck, who was away on business. Um, tonight and he is available for either the 9th or the 11th he indicated so throw it open for discussion do we have a time in mind well, i believe because we wanted to this was going to be an exclusive uh <coughs> item it would be a 5 to 7 p.m type of uh, arrangement well i do work at a candy store that's the work the week of valentine's day so um i might not be able to get here right at five but I that's think. that's entirely <coughs> we could we could be five thirty yeah. seven five thirty seven thirty help i have a work conflict on the ninth okay. i i personally like to see it stay on the 20th i think um we've made we, we've talked about where what do we want to do with the grant do we want to enter a contract with grand opera house foundation um or do we want to open it up for other possible people wanting to 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 run the opera house <laughs> i think the longer we postpone it the farther we push it back the harder the discussion becomes to what are we going to continue are we going to move forward i mean i understand mr hartman can't be here but he's the chair they have a vice chair there's other board members that can talk on behalf of the grant um because i'd like to go into closed session to decide after this if we're gonna enter a contract with the grand opera house or we don't because the farther we push it back the farther they're going to be planning their schedule into next year and if we don't enter a contract with them we could be held responsible or the new people we would lease the grant to have to pay those performances and things like that I, I see no reason to postpone it we have it on the 20th and leave it at the 20th and move forward. other thoughts I would agree with mr. Herman I think it's the sooner the better I, I just want to make a note about <clears throat> the 9th of February is the uh, there is a parks board meeting that evening, yeah, but yeah, that, I, but I, the, the only conflict I see. 
and, and I, I don't have no. any issue whether we keep the 20th or move no. it to the 11th just works for me I think we ought to we ought to move it because mr. Hartman is the chair and I'm very involved with it we've indicated that we think it's important to have a workshop with them and and they are a partner and when we work with partners we work with partners on setting <laughs> dates we don't say hey here, here's a date try try and make it at that time um, it's too bad we didn't do it in the fall but we're beyond the fall we could have pushed it for the fall at the same time so I, I think going to the 9th and 11th is, is the appropriate thing to do and it's, it, it's the appropriate way that that we work with partners with partner organizations I think the workshop uh, I think we need to hear what what folks have to say and I think uh, again uh, Mr. Hartman is a, is a key person with them so I would much prefer to see the, the change I think I think we'll be operating on on less than total information that we should be operating on if, if he and, and we don't uh, open it up to them because they've, they've indicated they would like to, to see it on on one of those dates so yeah. those are my thoughts I would share and the reason I recommended changing the date was mr. Hartman when he indicated he wouldn't be, he wouldn't be available for January 20th he said it, it is his intent that that this would be that everything would be resolved uh, <coughs> by April 1st so that was his goal to have it done we've extended the lease until June 30th uh, so that would give us a couple months uh, but that was his his uh, indication to me um, I gave you a couple dates only because uh, you see a couple of items down the school board was looking at uh, <coughs> having a meeting with us and we were still kicking around a date there uh, Councillor Fitzgerald's correct the Parks Board uh, is meeting on the 9th but if we moved it to the 11th then we would very likely move the school board to March so I just wanted to to give you all the moving parts that you have in front of you at this time I think um, my thoughts in regards to this are very similar uh, to mr. Herman's I I do understand what mayor tower is saying uh, in regards to mr. Hartman you know however I guess I'm not overly concerned because uh, Frank tower is the vice chair who's I think very very capable he's probably knows much more about the grand really um, than a lot of people and certainly obviously has served on council so understands um, our position and role as well um, and, and there are a lot of variables um, you know we're, we're not really sure how we're how we're moving forward as of yet um, and I think um, it is shared responsibility as far as if you know there should have been a workshop this fall um, both with the Grand Opera House Advisory Board um, their executive director and, and as, as well as us so um, I would actually like to see it kept on the 20th I think it's much harder for the seven of us to come to a date than it is um, you know perhaps you know one person that's on the exec committee on the board that's just my thoughts yeah I, and I've indicated what my thoughts are I think uh, you know we, we try to work with people um, so I, I would hope would would move it to, to make it work for them same way it works I for guess us, so. yeah on that Mr. Olaf, have we heard from any other board members from the Grand Opera House Board? That too, I'm flexible. I prefer to do it the week or the twentieth. Uh, or is it just Mr. Hartman that day, the concern is? I only spoke with Mr. Hartman in terms of scheduling this. So we haven't heard from any other board members or any of their other folks that would be part of that presentation that can't make that twentieth. No, I'm I'm not aware um, who from the Grand would attend if Mr. Hartman. Uh, well, he's out of town, so. He won't be attending, but I don't, know, I don't know who they would be having to come if Mr. Hartman's unavailable. Well, it appears as though I'm kind of outvoted here, it looks like. Um, you know, I am disappointed in that, um, but I accept that. Um, so I guess we'll go ahead and do it on the 20th at 530. Also, with there is a... And we'll just have to ask them if they can have the other board members there to the extent that that's uh, possible so yeah. but my hope is as we when we work with people in the future we do try to work with them yeah. just to confirm 5 p.m. is that 5 let's 30. do 5 you, 5 30 that, the 20th 5, will be fine I can, 5, I can make it at, at 5. 5 I know mr. Peck sometimes gets right up to 5 let's do 530 mr. Peck represents 530 yeah okay so we are set for two hours it would be a two hour that's next Tuesday, right? Mm -hmm. All right correct. there. Correct. All right. Next Tuesday for two hours or less if it takes less, but we yeah. ought to be able to do it. Before Which the makes sense because that's a plan commission evening. I think that was the idea to have it move after. It would be after plan commission because plan commission is at four o'clock. So, five thirty. So five thirty is better anyway. Yes. Is that okay? Are we set then? 
Okay, so we will not be moving it. Okay, the next thing is the sex offender workshop, which we have scheduled for January 26th. I think we're still on there, and that's from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. We all okay there? The next thing is a meeting with the Oshkosh Area School Board. We're looking at February 11th or March 11th. Um, <coughs> any thoughts on that? Let's do February 11th. I'm open either day. Doesn't matter to me. Uh, I gotta think for a second. This is Fe part of the February 11th. I think I'm fine. March 11th. May not work. Um, went there both Wednesdays. Mr. Mayor. No, I'm okay on March. This 11th. is typically. Uh, this is a school board meeting uh, workshop date for them. So we've been invited to join them at the school district. You recall the last time we had this a few years ago, they came here. So they've asked us to join them at their board meeting. That's It's on a Wednesday. Um, so I'll get the exact time because it's really going to be about how their schedule works out. I'll share with them Ms. Pansky's schedule um, so that we can try to move it a little later. Uh, but I'll get the exact time. I'm meeting with uh, Superintendent Stan Mack on Thursday so I'll have more information for you uh, we're going to discuss potential topics and I'll share that with the council as well but I'll give you an exact time um, after I meet with mr. Mack okay so we're talking February 11th at this point mm -hmm. February 11th that work? as long as the time is okay <clears throat> okay February 11th all right the next item on the agenda is direction of the staff on open liquor, open liquor licenses a uh, little bit of yes. introduction to this uh, periodically we have open liquor license we didn't used to have very many of them we are limited by state law to I think 132 liquor licenses which we can award out there they used to be highly competitive out there uh, they haven't been quite as competitive in the, in the past few years uh, and sometimes there are no open liquor licenses and uh, but this year there are a number I'll ask the clerk to comment on what we actually have I don't know if the numbers like three or four open liquor licenses in, in just a second um, we had indicated previously several months ago that uh, we would tell people that after the first of the year we would uh, take a look at applications and have people come before us we did indicate at that time that if people were interested in liquor license and if we announced that we were going to consider awarding those liquor licenses that would like to see them come with a plan would like it to be a pretty well thought out plan uh, so now it's up to us council do we want to go ahead with that it is after the first of the year so that should be put on the agenda we had told people we were going to look at that and have them provide them the opportunity if they so desire to come before us a uh, quick question of the clerk what do we have in the way of open, open liquor licenses at the current time and what's the list of people who appear to have an interest we have four open licenses one is been reserved at the Marion location um, we have six applicants that have filed papers that are interested in the remaining three okay so there, there are some papers but they're not we haven't made any determination if they're eligible there were they, um, the clerk has not gone through that yet and we'll we'll do that before we would have any type of presentation okay, with so, the council so if they're not eligible for example zoning or something like that we would we would just simply not bring those to council. Okay, do we want to set a meeting in which we would indicate that we will have people make presentations? Yeah, well, Mr. Cummings. I have a question first to the city clerk. Uh, I think over the past year or so, we've had people come to us with kind of sob stories about they're trying to sell their property and the liquor license is part of it and, and so forth and so on. Are there licenses out there that are not being used? Are we, are, are we aware of it? For example, like the tallies, they recently closed. Um, the tallies, there was also uh, the was tilted a, kilt. Mahoney's. The Another council had given us direction. It used to be that we would have to wait an entire year, which in some right. cases could almost be two years before council saw it. Last year, council said that once we become aware that a business is no longer operating, that we should start the clock immediately. And after one year of inactivity, we come back to council and point that out. Sometimes those folks renew and after a year we bring it to your attention now other times they don't <coughs> renew and simply it becomes available uh, so it, it really I think it's better because then it's fair to everybody it's one year regardless of when your year began um, we're aware that one 
has since expired. That was Timbuktu. Mm -hmm. We have to bring that to council, though. So that's not. That's why that's not on the list yet because we bring it to council. We it literally just reached a year yesterday. So it would have been premature to bring it to you tonight. They could have done something as of yesterday. So next meeting we'll bring that to your attention as well. But those three we have open, plus the one reserved on Marion Road. The one, I, the one I'm thinking of, there was a council meeting when a license that was kind of last minute was switched from the old Knights of Columbus to a Bangkok or Thai restaurant uh, in the university. Do we know in, if, in fact, they are serving liquor there? It was a real quick last minute switch from one location to the other. One of the things that we learned from uh, a previous liquor license application is as long as they're selling some type of alcohol, it doesn't matter what intensity of use they're using for that. Yeah. That Thai restaurant is still using that Class B liquor license, um, and we don't have any reason to question okay. that they're not. But are they selling, you know, hard liquor? Right. They're not required to, but they're able to. Whether they do it or not is is entirely up to them. And we had a couple cases like that. Yeah, that's right. Um, Mr. Roloff, you you mentioned or the court mentioned that we have a reserved liquor license for the Marion Road that's got that's more or less an economic development type I mean it's assigned currently to the Marion Road area but could that be moved to upon staff learning of say a hotel motel resort wanting to come in and they need a liquor license that that could be moved to another location or I know there's been some discussion that should we hold one or two back for economic development or future economic development plans where they may need a liquor license. So um, the one on Marion Road, is it tied up just to Marion Road and we can't move it? It is morally committed to Marion Road. That has been, that predates me being with the city. So that's over six years. And we have done everything to make sure that we've been able to hold on to that. Because I think for some of these redevelopment areas, as I pointed out in my memo, that there are there is some value to hanging on to something for some unique project. And the idea was that Marion Road may be one of those that we would need it. And I would agree with you that there may be a couple other places. Um, and I would suggest that uh, as you evaluate whoever comes before you, that you think about other potential possibilities out there. You are not required to award any uh, or, uh, or any of them at all. So that's entirely up to you. If you want to reserve those for something better, something different so it, it, that's entirely up to council's discretion you could take away the Marion Road designation uh, I wouldn't recommend that because of I think we've made a moral commitment but the council has every ability to do that as well that being said do we, so we don't have to identify a location we could just say we only have two liquor licenses available even though we actually have three and we just leave one kind of in the bullpen if you want to call it that absolutely and and I think that that is something that council needs to give some thought yep. to. If you had three great proposals, I think you'd be compelled to, to want to grant them, but it, great is in the eye of the beholder, and the council is the one who gets to make that call. So before we bring anybody forward, uh, I guess I'm looking for a direction from your, you or from the city attorney to, is it better to, to let those out there know that we are only going to give out two, even though we have three available with one reserved to Marion Road? I, I would comment and say, I don't know if we're going to give out any. That's true. Because we we, we've made it pretty clear that as we go ahead, we're going to look for unique development opportunities. Things are unique. if they're, So I think we, we set a date for when we're going to do it. We listen, and then we make the decision okay. whether we, we award I'm okay it. I'm that, too. Because when people come, the history, I've been on this for a number of years, <laughs> the history is we have not seen a tremendous number of, of nice plans that are set to go. Uh, not I, I want one because I think someday I might want to sell a building that might have it in. Right. We, I, I think the council has indicated that <clears throat> before. So if if we see four great plans, we might decide to award them all. But if we don't, we don't have to award any. We may hold four of them for the great plans whenever yeah. they come. But I think we're better off looking at proposals and then making that decision because otherwise it sort of implies that we're going to say we hold two back we're going to award two we yeah. may not want to award two so that's a good point so i think okay. the sequencing and we can have yeah. that discussion at a later point in time right. if, if people agree with that concept that's fine yeah. 
but I, but I think your question about procedure, I, I, I'd rather set this meeting sooner rather than later and get going. And there is right. a, a seasonality to some of the proposals. I know, uh, you know, getting getting making some decisions by I, I don't know. Is there a period of time or which a liquor license needs to become activated at the time it's approved by a council, or is it is it immediately? Once you approve it and it's met all the inspections, mm -hmm. it can be issued right away. It can happen pretty quickly. Okay. But now, do they also get a calendar year if, let's say, they we approve the plan, <coughs> and now they got to either build a building or retro do a building or whatever they got to do to make it to open? Do they have like a calendar year to open it? And if they don't, it can be rescinded. I would say yes. Okay. And also, we could set the conditions because they may come and say, "I want to open this in six months to try and do it." And we may say, "Okay, we'll hold it for six months." Okay, we're we're in control of exactly what it is after listening to the plan. That's correct. So it's right? kind of like the planning commission putting conditions on the. Exactly. We we could put we have done that in the past. Okay, very good. Okay, Thank so you. I, I think probably what we ought to do at least we have the one with Tinbeck two coming up, and that ought to be on the next council agenda. And then the council meeting after that, we probably ought to announce. So that would be in the first meeting. And we could do it that way. It could just but be I cleaner. I don't know whether or not we have Tim Buck two on there, and we can't really do that till the next meeting. And that would give everybody a month to come up with their, their plan if they're going to do it. Mm -hmm. Plus, other people could, could apply. Is there any noticing requirement, Pam, that we would need to do to? I was going to say, we haven't gotten the information yet in our office. We have to draft the complaint, in it, so I will try to get it done for the next meeting, but I don't, I haven't received the information yet, so. What I think I heard council say, though, is you want to wait until Timbuk 2 gets resolved before you schedule, so well, if. Well, but we also want to get that scheduled pretty soon so that people know what the date is and so that if there's some timeliness to any of these particular projects, that we can move forward, so let's. Okay. I mean, another option, I mean, you could have this <coughs> hearing as soon as we let these folks know. Hearing isn't the right word, but presentations. And if you choose to give some out, you can just hold the others in abeyance. Just because you didn't say yes doesn't mean you necessarily said no type right. of thing. So uh, you could hear everybody's presentation, and you could always bring it back. I'd like to consider uh, idea C. Uh, we gave them to A and B. I'd like to consider C now. Council can bring that up at any time. You know, in the night of the presentation, we don't have to make the decision either, right? Entirely up to the council. We're we're in control. Are we doing oh, it? Okay, on could we do night? if if you weren't ready with ten buck two for the next one? Could we do ten buck two the same night we do the other ones? I sort of want to get to those as, as quickly as sure. possible, sure. so we we would know at that point in time. We can do that. Okay, yeah, Miss Allison, ask me. Oh, um. Basically, uh, what Mayor Tower said um, certainly was are my sentiments exactly. I certainly support what uh, Mayor Tower has to say because I think it's one of those things that's highly desirable. And I, before I even was on council, I would watch, and there would be a number of people looking for the liquor license. It's in economic development. It's just one extra tool in our toolbox, and I think it's right in line. And to Mayor's point, um, just because there's four available doesn't mean we have to give the four out. With the visioning study, uh, with for the riverfront, with what GoEDC is doing, and just the overall um, comprehensive plan for the city, um, you know, we're not just going to settle for just something that comes along. You know, we want to make sure that it's the right, the right project. So. Okay, so we will let people know that we'll do it the first meeting. We're, we're, Are we doing it at a council night? Is that that's yeah. typically done at a council night okay. early on in the in the agenda so you get the whole time to hear all the presentations that's typically how you do and it I, but I think we want to make it clear out there if, if Jeff is writing this down or whatever <laughs> that we want to see plans for real opportunities for things and that's one of the issues um, one of the six is a vacant piece of property with absolutely no building plans in place frankly I don't even think council should hear that one um, because there's <coughs> there's nothing to give a liquor license to if they want to do a building, they're really doing it on spec, which is, unless I hear otherwise, I just don't think it's appropriate to bring forward to council. <coughs> I think we're set. So we'll get that information out to those people that have applied. And Jeff can put it in the paper that we're going to do that in case anybody else wants to get an application. In. All right, I think that issue is settled. Uh, city manager compensation study. I'll turn to the deputy mayor for comments on that. 
Thank you, Mayor. Um, this is just something for um, the, the council con to consider because certainly after um, you know we had our closed session uh, December 9th and and conversations with city manager Roloff, uh, certainly a compensation study um, was brought up. And I think it's something for council, uh, maybe not necessarily to make a decision this evening, um, but certainly moving forward, you know, is that an investment of something that we would like to get an outside council or an opinion on? Uh, we have in the last couple of years uh, gotten some comparables done internally in regards to the Midwest. Uh, you know, do we want to continue um, doing that or or do something different? So just uh, bringing it out there, um, I know it was something that was on City Manager Roloff's mind and wanted to address it with the council uh, publicly um, if that is something that we want to do to help um, down the road. Okay, so we're not looking for anything immediate tonight. Nope, but just something to um, certainly consider. Okay, good. Any comments on that? Okay, seeing none, we'll take us back to our, our, our second session with citizen statements to the council. Again, this is your opportunity to comment on something good going on in the city or a concern you may have. If you would like to comment on something, the microphone is, is open there. Uh, again, uh, give us your name, give us your address, limit your comments to no more than five minutes, no electioneering. Don't speak to anything that's already been spoken to on the agenda <coughs> tonight and speak directly to the council. I live at 1316 Broad. I come to you this evening in regard to uh, uh, there is has been funds, and I'm I'm saying it in, to the open. In regard, there are funds, and I think that our officers should start being wearing uh, recording systems. I think it's going to help the system. It's going to help the people. Um, and I heard that there is funds. And I want to thank the city of Oshkosh, especially the city hall. They have opened the chambers here for a friend of mine who has stepped down, Tom Petri. Uh, he has done a tremendous job. He's done a tremendous job with our family in circumstance. Um, and I want to invite everybody to the Polar Plunge, February 20th, 21st at Menominee Park. Nikki is going to do another tremendous job. Yeah, thank you. Anybody else like to come forward? Seeing no one come forward, I'm going to take to the city manager announcements and statements. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just a preliminary save the date announcement. Uh, State of the City is going to be scheduled for Monday, March 23rd at the Convention Center. Uh, the doors will open at 6 p.m. and presentation will start at 6.30. Uh, we had such fun including the council members in the presentation that we will continue that great honor tradition since 2014 um, and we'll in be contacting you about uh, some of the things we'd like you to help us with uh, we will still have the uh, department's uh, presentation uh, booths at uh, various stations throughout the convention center so save the date and uh, we'll be contacting you soon about uh, anything you can do to assist us that's it Okay. Look for a motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved. Second. <laughs> <laughs> no moved and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We're adjourned.